Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our WordStream and um, Hennepin Marketing joint webinar on uh, conducting PPC audits. Um, we've got a really exciting um, presentation for you uh, prepared today uh, for our optimization uh, cl clinic. And um, I'm pleased to be joined with uh, my uh, valued and esteemed colleague, uh, Sean Quadlin from uh, Hennepin Marketing. Um, and he's a uh, He's a blogger there and an account manager there. And uh, if, if uh, word streamers, if you've never um, if you've never heard of uh, PPC Hero, then uh, let me just give you a little background there. Uh, they're a, a real uh, amazing agency. Uh, they they work with kind of medium and large size clients, and uh, they also have a blog called PPCHero.com. And uh, you know, I've been reading their blog for about five years now, and they, they produce really great uh, content and, and expertise. So it's, it's really great to be doing this uh, webinar with you guys. Uh, Sean, do you want to say anything? It's just great to be here, Larry. Thank you for having me. I was honored that you consider me an esteemed colleague. You are also an esteemed colleague. So thanks for having me. It's exciting. Thanks. And uh, by the way, uh, WordStreamers, my name's Larry Kim. I'm the founder of WordStream. Uh, I founded the company, uh, it's actually an error, it should be about five or six years ago, and uh, WordStream is a provider of a PPC management uh, platform called PPC Advisor, and we also provide various free tools like the AdWords Grader and Keyword Research Tools. So thank you all for joining us today. Um, and on our agenda today, it's, it's, this is one of our most popular webinar formats. It's, a, it's a, a kind of a live PPC uh, account optimization clinic. So. As you know, we, I've, I sent you all out a couple emails over the last couple of days, asking you to, you know, if you'd like to have your account graded for free, for free by Sean and I, just to send over the link. And we, Sean and I, looked it over earlier this week, and we picked uh, two accounts. And so we're going to be looking over uh, two uh, accounts uh, uh, that we've selected, and we'll be helping diagnose sort of the challenges and the opportunities that are present in, in, in these accounts. And it'll, it'll um, give you a sense for kind of our workflow and, and uh, what, what it is we look for uh, when, when diagnosing and, and, and auditing accounts. And Sean also has a little bit about kind of his own uh, you know, guiding formula, what, what he does, how he prioritizes his tasks. So I think that's going to be valuable as well. Um, Please uh, take part in our uh, interactive uh, webinar today. It's a live webinar, so uh, if you want, you can, you know, tweet stuff. Include the the hashtag PPC Clinic in your hashtags. That way, uh, you know, we can all participate. And and I think uh, Megan and Chris are going to be looking at that as well. They're our, our um, marketing um, colleagues here at, at Wordstream at, and Hennepin. And um, Sean, I think uh, wanted to talk a little bit about his guiding formula. Take it away, Sean. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Larry. So I hope that of the people that are watching this, maybe somebody else writes this down next to their desk and kind of looks to it whenever they're whenever they're questioning things. This was um, a formula that was given to me by a colleague of mine, Jeff Allen, that I work with, and it's something that kind of it was like a light bulb moment for me. I don't know if it's because I'm a math nerd at heart or if just seeing things written out like this made sense to me, but whenever I'm approaching PPC, all of the actions that we're taking, um, I think, are either going to affect your cost per click or your conversion rate. So if you're doing something, um, how is this going to reduce your cost per click, which is ultimately your goal, or how is this going to increase your conversion rate? At the same time, you know, leads, um, leads is what you're going for, so you want to have as many of those as possible. And then spend, in a lot of cases, is fixed. You know, not, not everybody has unlimited budgets for PPC, and so it's getting the most up, out of your spend, and that's by reducing CPC. And so a lot of the things we're going to talk about in today's optimization clinic are ways to reduce reduce your cost per click. And so that's having a really robust keyword list with long tail stuff. And so there's less competition and those clicks are cheaper. It's having a higher quality score so your ad rank is higher in AdWords. And because of that, you're paying less for each of your clicks. All the different things that we're going to touch on um, at a certain point are going to reflect back to cost per click. And then conversion rate is something that's kind of what happens when people get to your site. So it's what you're doing with your traffic, how you're making sure to optimize that and make that you're driving traffic to your site through cost per click, but then what are you after it? So sometimes your conversion rate can be affected by things like targeting. If your keywords aren't detailed enough or specific enough for what you're trying to get people to do, you're going to have a bad conversion rate. Um, it can go beyond even you know having conversion rate optimization on your site itself. It's kind of putting together the targeting that AdWords makes possible to you and just making sure that it's optimized for conversions. So it's the type of people that you want to get. Um, 
that's I, I have that written down literally right next to my computer monitor, and I have it highlighted in orange, CPC and conversion rate, because those are the two that we can make a difference on. Those are the two that we can change. And I've actually added up there so long that it kind of gets faded, and every like three months I have to re-highlight it because I just like I don't think it stands out enough. So eventually I probably wear out paper, but it's still good for now. Um, that's how I always approach PPC, and that's kind of what I keep in the back of my mind when I'm doing these things. D does that all make sense to you, Larry? Is there anything that um, I guess that you wanted to say about it as well? I know it is my formula that I introduced. No, uh, no, that's great. Uh, I think I think of it the same way. Um, I just kind of make it. I flip it on its side, so it looks like a nice little triangular funnel. Um, <laughs> but that's uh, <laughs> that's the only difference. My poster is a little different looking. Uh, all right, awesome. So. Great. Uh, I think that's a great workflow to think through uh, in, in terms of like uh, your process and stuff. And, and uh, why don't we just dive right into the you know what we've all been waiting for here, which is the live uh, clinic. Let's look at some uh, two two real AdWords accounts, and we'll we'll be uh, kind of pointing out sort of the positives and the negatives and how to optimize. And now, um, and first of all, uh, I'd like to thank everyone who. Who submitted uh, their their accounts to be optimized today? Uh, certainly, um, you know we we don't have the opportunity to look over all of them, uh, uh, but I think that um, it, it's it's really great that you're you're submitting kind of especially people who submitted kind of the you know great greater reports that didn't didn't look so hot perhaps um, you know because I think that's really um, really a positive thing to be trying to you know get. Uh, in a, uh, to optimize and improve your account, even if it's admitting that uh, things aren't necessarily going perfect uh, just yet. So I think that's a great a attitude. Uh, why don't we uh, look at the first report here? Uh, it's this one right here. And so, um, uh, in this uh, clinic, what we'll, we'll be looking at is um, we'll be looking at actual AdWords report cards from the WordStream AdWords Performance Grader. And if you haven't heard of that, um, it's just a free tool for for doing a an audit of your account. You can you can you can do that from either wordstream.com or from uh, ppchero.com. Uh, it's uh, it's a free tool, and and you can just run a run a quick audit for, of your account, and that's completely free. Uh, in order to uh, just maintain some privacy. Uh, what I've done here is I've taken a screenshot of the uh, the report card that we're going to be looking over today, and I've. Um, Kind of obfuscated out the the company name uh, in terms of you know, it's just so, so that you don't we don't know exactly who this mysterious advertiser is, uh, but the data and stuff we'll, we'll be lo be looking at, uh, at in detail. And so this particular report that we're looking at has to do with a, a company that's in the the energy industry. So that's like a really great uh, you know kind of a vertical for for, for paid search because I, I would think that there's decent margins in terms of kind of like you know doing. Um, uh, solar panel roofs and all this stuff. It's like it's, there's probably more margins than say like selling bubble gum. So this is this is a great business. Uh, the company here um, they're spending roughly you know five thousand dollars a month on paid search, uh, and and um, you know I think that's pretty typical. Maybe uh, maybe Sean works with like slight larger accounts. Typically, uh, Worshin probably works with smaller accounts. But uh, but basically the 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 bad news is that. The WordStream did a analysis on this account, and we've come up with a grade of zero percent, uh, meaning like it, we we grade on a curve, and we look at you know dozens, we look at thousands of of, of uh, reports cards like within the energy industry, and try to figure out like how does this account compare to the other paid search accounts uh, out there, and and um, and and as you can see, uh, this one is not uh, not performing up to. Par, and so I thought we could just go through the the report card uh, with um, with Sean and and, and, and um, kind of see what we can do here. So the first category we have is uh, the important category of wasted spend, and so what the report card is doing is just checking to see how many negative keywords were added uh, within the last. Uh, the last quarter and, and, and the last month uh, in, in this particular account. You know, if you're spending five thousand dollars a month, that's almost a sixty thousand dollar a year uh, investment. So obviously, it makes some sense to, to do a little bit of negative keyword research. But how much? And so uh, we're seeing, on average, the, the the competitors in this industry are doing roughly. You know, they're adding around hundred per month. Like like you know, people spending around five thousand dollars in the energy industry. That's kind of what we're seeing. Uh, this this account is doesn't appear to be doing any negative keyword research, uh, which was one of our top um, optimizations. Uh, Sean, do you have any thoughts on this one? 
Yeah. Um, so I, I, sort of, I guess I want to backtrack a little bit. Underneath the zero percent, it says time to fix this. And I think we could have just like a, a happy little man who's saying we get to fix this together because it's kind of exciting to be in a position with a zero percent. So um, anonymous submitter, do not feel bad because I think it's an exciting time for you. Um, there are a lot of things that can be done quickly, and so you can move your account in the right direction in a really rapid pace. So um, I guess one way to start is with wasted spend. Larry, earlier you talked about how much time it takes to build out your negative keyword list, and uh, I know that you guys have a great tool to do that, so that's a really, um, that could be a quick way to go about it. And then in addition to that, um, that's just a, a good place to kind of know if your clicks are targeting the right things. You can download a search term report, see um, who, what searches you've gotten over the last 90 days, and then just exclude the ones that don't make any sense for your, for your business at all, somebody who's clearly not, um, not interested in what you're trying to offer them. And so having zero over the last 90 days, I think it's kind of an exciting position. It's like a super raw draft prospect out of, you know, um, who's only been playing organized ball for like a year, and everyone's like, they have so much potential. I think that's, that's where this account is. And the, the first place to start that is just taking a look at your search terms, um, seeing what doesn't make any sense, and then just get it out of there, saving yourself those wasted clicks. Yeah, and we'll, we'll take a look at those search terms in just a moment. Uh, the, the only thing I would want to add here is that I, I feel like this is a really good place to start in terms of uh, this anonymous advertiser. You know, if you're... Um, you know, not sure where to begin. This is kind of like the low-hanging fruit because, like, I think that you know, right off the bat, you could probably see anywhere from a five to thirty percent improvement in terms of your uh, your cost per click and and, and waste, uh, wasted spend elimination, uh, and that and, and that savings could then be applied to you know more valuable clicks. So that's like like uh, Sean was saying, that's pretty exciting. Um, all right, so moving along here, uh, as you can see, this is a very comprehensive uh, audit uh, report, and uh, it, it's grading in various different categories. So uh, the second category that we, we grade based on has to do with quality score. Uh, I happen to think that quality score is one of the more, more important um, metrics in, in, uh, in a PPC account. Uh, performance because uh, it, it kind of determines your cost per click, it determines your ad rank. These are very uh, important factors in terms of your um, success or failure at, at paid search. And one of the things that we've noticed uh, from having done this audit is that the uh, volume, sort of the impression rated quality score uh, for this account is 1.7. So quality score is a sc score between 1 and 10. 10 is perfect. 1 is, you know, uh, needs improvement. And uh, you, you kind of <laughs> want to be, uh, <laughs> you know, you want to be somewhere in the middle there, like, you know, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 would be, could be great. And uh, what we're seeing here in this distribution, unfortunately, uh, on this curve, uh, the or the kind of the yellowish curve is sort of the kind of the distribution uh, the, 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 of uh, quality scores of, of the keywords that we see in typical accounts uh, in this industry that are spending roughly the same amount. Uh, and the green bars, like, that's what we're seeing in this particular anonymous account. And so um, you can see how the shift, there's like uh, the most of the quality scores in this particular particular account is, is like in the one and three range, whereas more typically, we would see more like five, six, and sevens, uh, for example. So I think that's uh, possibly an issue. Uh, what, do, what, what do you think, uh, Sean? I think um, as we're going through this, it's kind of kind of emerges a trend that all this stuff works together. So just, we just talked about negative keywords and how there's not any in the account. Um, that translates to quality score. So right now, click through rates are very low because there are no negative keywords in the account, and because of that. We have low click-through rates, and we have low quality scores. So Google's saying that whatever ads this, that are in this account, they're just not useful for the users. Nobody's clicking them, so they're choosing to kind of penalize them by giving them a lower quality score. And so it all just works together in a relationship. If you have more negative keywords, you'll improve your click-through rate. You'll be able to bid more aggressively knowing that you're doing a good job with those keywords. And your quality scores should be able to move in the right direction pretty quickly. I'm thinking with this distribution between ones and threes, um, you know, just a handful of optimizations, you can really move this thing in the, in the right direction. So again, it's a position where it's not great right now, but there are, it's just so much opportunity. You know, you can turn all those ones, um, and we're going to talk more about keywords in, in, uh, in a little bit. So some of those ones, they might not be the best targeting terms, they might not just work for the account, but also, if you just add in some negative keywords, they're going to be a lot better, and Google's going to take that into account when it kind of, you know, 
tells you if you're good or not <laughs> with its quality score metric. You can kind of determine your self-esteem as a pay-per-click marketer. Yeah, awesome. And I, I, we actually calculate sort of the, the benefit. So like if this anonymous adverter, advertiser could go from a 1.7, if they could increase it by 3.5, uh, th then you'd expect this advertiser to, to save, you know, seven thousand dollars, or get a thousand four hundred more clicks per month. So that's that's a lot of leverage uh, in terms of like, uh, you know, kind of glass half full looking in terms of like all, all this optimization that could be uh, had. So I think that's that's great. Um, so our next uh, category has to do with. Impression share, uh, and so impression share, that's just an important measure in AdWords that tells you how often your ads are appearing for the searches that you're hoping to target. Like Google does, you'll, you'll notice when you do a Google search on the keywords you're targeting, your ads don't always show up. Uh, and so uh, the reason is because Google doesn't monetize 100% of their ad inventory. And so ideally you want to make it so that you're, you're capturing sort of the lion's share of the uh, of the uh, available searches that you're interested in. Unfortunately, what we're seeing here is that um, it's it's kind of the opposite. Unfortunately, so like of uh, the hundred percent of universe of available searches that this, this anonymous advertiser is targeting, uh, only forty five percent of that available uh, impressions are actually being targeted. Uh, whereas 50% uh, of that is, is uh, Google is preferring not to show the ad, uh, and 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 the reason has to do with either it has to do with low ad rank, which could be a combination of poor relevancy or lower, or that the bids are just too low. So, um, any thoughts? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was actually sort of surprised that it was only 50%. So when you see quality scores where over half or just the majority of the quality scores are, are a one. Um, you know, you get that status, the dreaded orange status that says rarely shown due to low quality score. And so to see that they already have 45% of ad, or they're already getting 45% of a share, honestly, my first impression was kind of, I was surprised. I was like, wow, they're still getting 45% with those quality scores. So um, I think that's good that there's still a presence, but it does make me question just, um, I'm guessing the bids are pretty high to still have a low quality score like that and then still have, um, 50%, only 50% lost to ad rank. I, I, this is just an estimated guess on my part, but I would say that they're probably paying a lot for the clicks that they are getting because they have a relatively high impression share considering where they sit with quality score. Do you think that that is a correct assumption or do you, would you go in a different way with that? Yeah, that's clearly the case. Um, you, the, the advertisers bidding, bidding up um, the keywords to capture up, uh, capture the 45% of the impression share that they're capturing. Uh, that's what I was. I was just kind of scrolling up and down to see if uh, the CPC, Irish CPCs, are here, but uh, they're they're actually not on this report. So, unfortunately, I don't. I can't confirm, but I'm I'm pretty sure you're you're, you're dead on there. Um, My gut okay. says they are pretty high, <laughs> so that makes me nervous for them. But that's another place where we can improve. Right. That's an opportunity for for optimization, which you should be very excited about. Anonymous advertiser. Um, <laughs> so our <laughs> our next uh, category has to do with click through rate, and this is probably, you know, one of the most popular sections of this audit report because it it shows you the click through rate of the top 200 keywords in your account. You know, in terms of the the average position. Uh, you know that the ad that the keywords are, are showing up in, and so obviously you'd expect to have a higher click through rate, you know, five, ten, fifteen, twenty percent, if, if you're in the first or second spot, whereas if you're in like the seventh, eighth, ninth, or tenth spot because you're towards the bottom of the page, you would expect to have much lower uh, click through rates, uh, and so that's why this plot is really interesting because because you can see the distribution of your click through rates based on the, the ad position. So the yellow curve on this um, page has to do with uh, kind of the expected uh, uh, click-through rate for a, a particular ad position, uh, and, and then you can see how a lot of the keywords are actually falling uh, far below the uh, the yellow line there in terms of like what typical click-through rates you, you'd see. Uh, and so the average click-through rate of this account is actually for search it's just 0.91 uh, percent, even though they're in a relatively high spot on average, like the second second uh, spot on average, 2.25. Uh, what what do you think about this one, Sean? Uh, again, this kind of harkens back to what we were just talking about, but that average position is pretty high considering um, what the quality scores are. So seeing um, seeing a 0.91 percent 
like, like your little line says, it's definitely suboptimal. It's, it's not what you want. It's not what you should be capable of getting at such a high position because you're probably above the ad, above the organic results in a lot of, a lot of cases. So I see that you're hovering over the, um, the different queries right now or the different keywords. So you can see, um, yeah, how about you, <laughs> you talk about that for a little bit. <laughs> Sure. Uh, it might be easier because I'm controlling the mouse here. Uh, uh, basically, what I'm seeing is like he does this anonymous advertiser has some really awesome um, keywords that are doing like 10, 15, 20 percent click through rates, and they're like really what's what's the what's the common denominator here? They're really rich in, in commercial intent. You know, solar po panels for your home, solar power system prices. Like these are people like. Smart solar energy panels. People ready to buy. You know, they, they're they're looking to looking to buy something that's very specific. Uh, you know, like he's, he's going after kind of what I would call long tail keywords because you know four or three or four words. Uh, these these are all doing pretty well. Uh, solar panel systems for homes. Excellent work. Uh, the keywords that are doing not so good are uh, they appear to be more like um, more around um, uh, informational queries such as uh, you know. Is solar power worth it? You know, I'm not saying that that's not a a great keyword for this uh, business, but certainly they're not, they don't have the same commercial intent behind them. If you if you're just researching, whereas as opposed to just you know trying to you know you're ready to buy. Here's another uh, another one that I thought was was um, was pretty bad was was uh, panels. So you know like that that, that there, there's a big you know what do you think about this one, uh, Sean? Uh, it's it's pretty broad, you know. Like some some panels can be quite broad. This keyword itself uh, that can think of all the, the industries that use the word panel. Um, you know, I know that Larry, you just a couple weeks ago were a panelist on a webinar. So it even applies to PPC. It's just that targeting is less than ideal, and I think that that kind of thought process um, is why the click through rate is so low. So if you if you see there, it has is that twenty three thousand impressions and 10 clicks. So I'm guessing yep. a lot of those impressions are, are housed up in quality score one that we were just looking, looking at a little bit ago. So uh, I think it's too broad, Larry. <laughs> I think it's just not a lot of intent, not, no, no buying intent. There's not even really research intent. And I think this might be a case um, where Google you know, recommends keywords and they say, oh, you could add these. Like They probably have a solar panel ad group, I'm guessing. And panels probably showed up as a, a keyword to add. And sometimes, if you're not careful, um, Google can show you some graphs with some of those keywords in the recommendations tab. And uh, beware. I, <laughs> I've heard of someone who, at some point, was bidding on a dog chow brand <laughs> because it somehow, like, it, it was very tangentially related to a keyword they were actually bidding on. So I, I was looking through this account, I was auditing it. And it said, you know, like, period of puppy chow. <laughs> like, what is happening? And <laughs> I blame it largely on um, not being diligent enough with those Google recommendations. Because that stuff's all automated. Um, you kind of have to comb through it. And so that's my guess as to why panels is appearing in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think that, yeah, that, that thing was soaking up like hundreds of thousands of impressions. Uh, you know, just making some tweaks to the, to the keywords could be really helpful. Uh, in terms of the click-through rate of 0.91%, even though the, the advertiser is on the second spot on average, so that's a, a pretty. Uh, I would consider that to be pretty low. So in the kind of the bottom ten percentile in terms of the the comparable analysis, other energy companies that are spending similar amounts of money. Uh, so there's definitely some room for for improvement there. Uh, so let's and, move uh, along to. Oh, go ahead. So, and just one more thing to add. People sometimes ask. They'll reach out um, to PPC Hero and say, "What's a good click through rate to start with?" And I just always say, right out of the gate. You want to get to one percent, but if you can see, you know, 0.9 up to up to one percent wouldn't be a huge increase, so they're still probably in the lower half of their competitive vertical. But I always say target one percent and then grow from there, because you can get click through rates really good, especially depending on you know what keywords you're targeting and just how your ads are written and what vertical you're in and everything like that. But target one percent and then plan on growing. So it's like you've reached a baseline of acceptability at one percent and that's just kind of a, a guideline that I use and then just grow from there. 
Awesome. And this advertiser actually has some really good keywords, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 percent click-through rates. It's just, I think the account is just being weighed down by some of the underperforming uh, keywords, because Google looks at the performance of the account overall as well. So, um, so just being more picky, maybe. Um, all right, so here we have our next category. It's called um, account activity. So uh, one of the things that we at WordStream kind of found was that successful advertisers are the ones that spend a decent amount of time, like you know, once a week or you know, twice a month or or or, or even every day. Like they're they're just doing a little bit of work to uh, optimize their their accounts on a continuous basis. Uh, and so one of the the things that we audit in the um, in the PPC free AdWords grader is just a, a quick check to see like. Are, are you doing, you know, how much optimization work are you doing in the account? Are, do you have the thing on autopilot, or are you actively, you know, trying out different, you know, ad texts and stuff like this and stuff? One of the things that we noticed is that within the last 30 days, this particular advertiser has been doing, you know, some work. Uh, you know, they've, you know, doing some work on the ad text, the keywords, you know, 200 and to either new keywords or bid changes, uh, you know, 26 new ad groups. Um, uh, or, or, or edited or, or deleted ad groups. So we're just measuring like how much has changed in the account, and so this is kind of on the. Uh, it's not not horrible, but it's still on the kind of the lower end in terms of activity because like there's so many you know negative keywords that you could be adding, and and, and so many different um, more specific you know long tail keywords that you could be adding, etc. Uh, what 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 do you think, uh, Sean? I think that this uh, it really speaks to me as someone who's kind of obsessed with my accounts and spend probably too much time thinking about them. It's nice to know that uh, the that stream agrees that the better way to spend your time, you know, being in the, being in the accounts. Um, I generally have, we call them monthly action plans around Hannapin. And so I'll have a set of activities basically every week I want to do something pretty significant to my accounts, whether it's a search query report looking for keyword additions and um, negative keywords to add, so an ad review basically once a month, um, and then placement reports for display network stuff, and then bid changes, however, however long it takes for you to get enough clicks to be able to tell what's actually going on. But it's that kind of routine maintenance that I think might be missing here. Like you said, you know, like, stuff is happening in the account, but um, it, it could probably be more standardized based on what we're seeing. And I think it could also just be um, kind of more focused. Things like having a task on your list to look for negative keywords, because there aren't any at the moment. And then um, we'll also, I'm kind of, a spoiler alert to the future of, of this review, but they also don't have a whole lot of ad testing going on. So that's another thing where it's just, you know, like, um, I guess as a professional, we consider it routine, but if you're managing your own account, it might be a different story. You might, might not be able to get to all those accounts, but that's a kind of, kind of the touch point that Google looks for and that signifies a healthy account, like Larry was saying. Yeah, so in fact, just, uh, this is not the the lowest score. So, like in terms of the other categories, like there were some lower marks in terms of like five percent or zero percent or whatever. So, like there, you know, this is a this is good. There, uh, and, and, I mean, just being positive, but like uh, I, I like the uh, the idea of um, kind of a weekly ry rhythm, like that, that you were talking about there. Uh, you know, it, it, it's just something that that gets becomes regular. Uh, you know, the company is spending sixty thousand on paid search, so it's got to be worth. You know, taking a look at it for at least half an hour uh, a week or something like that, uh, and and um, you know to, to to make the most of that money uh, by by setting a regular interval like once a week, you can also better kind of infer cause and effect, so you can kind of get a sense for kind of what changes resulted in what uh, what what uh, outcomes, and so that that's uh, another thing to think about. Um, yeah, that's a great point. Let's move on to our next category, which is uh, long tail keyword optimization, and so. This has to do with the keyword targeting issue. Uh, what we found is that uh, the longer tail keywords, like uh, you know, install solar panels or something like something more specific, uh, does uh, uh, tends to, on average, cost less per click, and often drives more conversions than kind of sort of like the short head terms, which would be like panels or something like that, like just something very broad and unspecific. And so this part of the report card is trying to judge what percentage of the impressions in this account are being accrued to kind of one word phrases, one word keywords like panels versus two and three word kind of longer tail terms that are kind of a bit more specific and more rich in intent. And so what I, I notice here is that 
you know, 68% of the impressions happening in this account are being accrued to those um, one-word keywords like panels. And I think that could be potentially a problem where it's only a minority, 18% of the, of the impressions are, are being accrued to you know, long-tail keywords. And so that, that could possibly be one of the things uh, causing the low click-through rates. And in terms of the um, kind of the rating, we're giving it a 5%. So like out of 100 advertisers, this is kind of the fifth lowest uh, in terms of the, their distribution of, of targeting long-tail keywords. Uh, any thoughts, Sean? Um, you know, I think you're right on the money. And what I, I think I could recommend, just as a, a plan of action for this um, anonymous advertiser, is that what you keep referring to him or her as? I'm trying to remember. Anonymous advertiser. Um, you could just take a look at a search query report over the last three months, or however long you've been doing it, and just sort it by clicks and cost, and see where you're actually getting your traffic from. Find the good keywords in there, and just turn some of your queries into keywords and I think it would be great to try and get rid of as many of these one, one word keywords as possible, especially because this product can't be, it can't be done in a word. It's not like you're selling shoes and you just want to bid on something super broad like shoes. Like even something very basic like solar panels is two words. So I think it would be a great idea to take a long, hard look at these one word keywords and then really try to just cut them out as much as possible and, and replace them Try to keep you know the same level of performance, but just with a lot more targeted traffic, a lot more targeted keywords, and that way you can have more targeted ads. So it all it all feeds in together. But turn that gray, uh, green or yellow, and I think the account um, will benefit from it. Right, it's kind of flip them around. It's almost like the you'd want the gray part to be the green part, and the green part to be <laughs> the gray part. Ideally, exactly. something like that. Yeah, great, great insights, uh, Sean. Um, Ad text, uh, so the way that the report looks at, at ad text is we kind of look to see in the account, you know, how many active ads are there uh, at, at this time. Like, uh, so we counted uh, 10 active ads in, in the account. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, the other accounts spending roughly 5000 a month in this industry, they had a couple hundred ads. So that, that there, there could be some opportunities there. We also look to see, you know, how many active ads were there in every ad group and so we saw that there was just one whereas on average uh, you know you, you tend to see like two two and a half ads per per ad group uh, and so at the bottom here we've got the uh, best and worst performing ads in terms of the, the, the click-through rate not a huge amount of difference in terms of the click-through rate 0.3 and 0.2 so 50 percent difference uh, but I've kind of blurred out the, the URL but you can kind of get a sense for um, you know what the ads look like uh, any thoughts uh, Sean yeah I think um some ad optimization can really help with quality scores. I've seen those gains myself, so that this one absolutely makes sense to really start trying. Um, when it comes to the ads themselves, I think what really stands out to me, especially in the best ad, like you said, there's not a lot of difference. So for that one, um, the headline just it's not active. I, in my experience, I think um, really active headlines trying to put a verb, so it kind of like there's an implication that a user should do something. But best solar and best price. Um, I just don't think that there's a lot of action going on there. And it's also like somewhat confusing. Like best solar is clearly a fragment, it's not a complete thought. And so you can just try to remove um, you know, remove one half of those and make it a more compelling thing. So it's like find your best pricing or uh, can you say best? I thought that was against the policies or something. Maybe I'm just making that up, Larry. <laughs> Uh, I think sometimes it gets slips, slips, slips through, but but yeah, I heard. In, it in an ideal world, Google catches all of those. But uh, you might want a, a headline because honestly, I, I, I like the description. So um, it, it, you know, it, it's hard to really like. Like I said, it, it takes me the longest to do ads because I think about this stuff way too much. But I like the benefits that they're trying out, and so you know, like locally owned, and I think 15 years experience. Those are both really good, really good benefits. So they're things that you want people to know. I think that's something that's going to get a click. It's just having the right headline that goes with that. So it could be something like "Stay local for your solar" or something, something like just a little bit more action to them, and then just test to see what the best one is. Because one ad per ad group, you're not finding out what messaging works best. You know, maybe locally owned is what's really driving this ad's click-through rate. And the 15 years experience, um, if you split it out and tested it by itself, maybe that would fall out of the rotation. So it's the, it's those kind of lessons that you can really find by having a routine ad test in place. Right. I just add that these click-through rates of 0.3% for being in the in the 
in the second ad position, uh, that's, uh, you know, there's a lot of upside potential there uh, in terms of like, you, you know, could you 10x that? Absolutely. Um, you know, one thing I would add is just, um, while these are very descriptive ads, and that's that's great, uh, I, I'm not, I'm kind of not feeling an emotional connection with, uh, with these ads. So, you know, the science of marketing is like, is one of persuasion, and you, you want to try to anticipate sort of the pains and the needs of the of the customer, and, and reflect that back in a way that really connects with with uh, whoever's conducting the search. Uh, I would th like I'm not an expert on, on on this market, but I would think that uh, you know some of the needs might be like maybe they're trying to be help the environment, or maybe they're trying to cut their energy bill, like if you, if you could kind of reflect those back in, in a way that strikes a chord emotionally, like save half on your energy bill, maybe that would be worth trying out. I don't know if it would work or not, but uh, definitely uh, the, the goal here is just to be trying out different ads and, and seeing you know, how, how different ads uh, resonate with, with your target audience. Absolutely. That makes total sense. Just thinking about someone who's searching for solar panels on Google, what are they trying to find? And I think finding energy savings is, is really great. So that, that's absolutely something worth t testing. And I think it stands a good chance at winning an ad test, too. Um, so lots of opportunities there. Uh, our second last section here, we're almost done, has to do with the landing page optimization. And uh, this particular company, unfortunately, appears to be pushing all of the traffic, all $5,000 worth of monthly clicks to, to just one landing page offer. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, you want to be targeted in your landing pages and, and have different types of offers for different types of searches. Uh, and so how many is enough? Well, you know, it depends on the business, but uh, in this particular case, what we're seeing is other advertisers in this marketplace, uh, you know, in this industry, uh, spending, you know, 60,000 a year, they tend to have a little bit more uh, landing pages than one. Uh, so there's maybe an opportunity to not only be, be, be more, uh, you know, targeted with the keywords and the ads, but also the the landing page offers that that, uh, you, that the advertiser, anonymous advertiser, is offering to the potential customers. Uh, your thoughts, uh, Sean? Yeah, I think um, they're just subtle shades that just directing everybody to the same page misses. Um, even if it's it's just a lead gen form, I think you know, like I don't in some of my accounts, I don't use forty five different landing pages just because it's a lead generation form, and I have you know probably ten different variations depending on what traffic I'm targeting. Um, so I don't think you need to go all the way to forty five in my experience, but you just want to be able to take people where they expect to go. They click on your ad for a reason, and you just want to be able to deliver on that immediately, just like you were saying. Yeah, the 45 is a bit misleading in that it's it's an average value. I should be using the median value. What's happening is there's always this one advertiser who has like you know 500 <laughs> landing pages. You know the, what I'm talking about. Uh, there's always a, a couple of these guys that have gone a little overboard. Um, I, I gotta, I'm gonna switch that to median. I think uh, you know more than one, less than 45 would probably make sense. Uh, all right. <laughs> I agree with that. I like that. <laughs> Um, the last section on our report here, in terms of the greater report that we've prepared for this anonymous advertiser, has to do with just some quick hit. You know, are you following best practices in terms of your PPC account? Uh, yes or no. So, um, are you using network targeting? Are you using geo targeting in all of your accounts? And so, um, you know, the, it appears that uh, you know some of the kind of more basic uh, optimizations uh, and, and tools that Google has to help you, you know, be more effective in your targeting. Maybe they're not fully taking advantage of all of them. Uh, which ones uh, stand out to you the most, uh, Sean? The, so there are, I guess, three, yeah. So geotargeting is huge, because this one also, it seems to be service a specific area. So that's something that really should be, um, that could be a quick fix, a quick win right away. Um, network targeting, you definitely want to separate search and display because ad, ads are just different on search and display. It's different user intent, so you want to separate that traffic and be able to handle it accordingly. And then you'll also be able to see um, how your click-through rate's doing a lot better. If you're merging those together, everything skews low because display network has so many impressions. But you want to know how your search traffic's doing. And then um, one thing that I, uh, it breaks my heart not to see, is conversion tracking. Because I think a lot of the things we talked about with keywords being too broad, um, I think that would emerge right away. So if you're tracking conversions, whether it's a, a lead form or something in, in analytics, it's as simple as you know, just time on site or if they're visiting more than one page, 
like maybe that's a conversion for you. You just want some sort of investment with the site. Um, if you're tracking your conversions, you'll be able to tell really quick how effective your targeting is and whether or not the things you're doing are the right things to do. So <laughs> I, I didn't mean to say three so rapid fire, but if you're going to ask, I have to. I have to say. I have to say what's on my mind, Larry. Yep, uh, lots of opportunity here, um, and uh, conversion tracking. Even though you, it seems very basic. Um, you, you, uh, here's a statistic for the audience. Uh, I, I work with small and medium-sized businesses, and, and what I'm finding is that half of, of of the kind of people, smaller businesses with the smaller budgets, half of them ha haven't been able to get get conversion tracking up and running. Uh, you know, maybe it's a little complicated to set up, but. Uh, it's definitely worth your while in terms of trying to figure out um, what's working, what's not working, uh, and uh, you know you can't optimize uh, unless you have the um, the goalposts kind of and, and the measuring in, in in place, or at least it's much harder to optimize. Um, you know, the, the last one I would point out here has to do with ad extensions, so like those little site links and and all sorts of little bells and whistles that you can add to your your, your ads to make them stand out in a in a crowded. Uh, search listing, uh, th those could definitely help uh, kind of the, the click-through rates uh, in, this, in this account, which I feel are kind of the root cause of some of the challenges. Um, any, any final thoughts here, Sean? No, I think they covered it. There are um, a lot of opportunity, <laughs> like you said, a lot of opportunity. It yeah, so you can see, uh, uh, Sean was just saying earlier how everything's kind of connected. I, I kind of think it's like, Here's the story of this account. You start off with like a low click-through rate. Why? Well, uh, it may be because the the the, the keywords are too broad. Uh, there's not enough negative keywords, and maybe there's not enough ad text uh, ad text optimization happening. Uh, also, there's certain optimizations in terms of the the best practices that could be used. All of these could then uh, result in a higher click-through rate, which would then improve this very low quality score. Which could then improve the impression share, uh, and that which would then improve this grade. Ta-da! It's that. It's that. Kinda <laughs> <laughs> it's just that simple. <laughs> <laughs> it's all connected here. All right. So I just but one other one here, and um, we're not going to go through it in as detailed uh, amount because we are short on time. We'll try to get through this in like lightning round here. Uh, this is this account has. Um, kind of a 98% uh, score. So uh, of, of 100 accounts that we see, this account is like the second best. Uh, it, it is, uh, this one is in, um, I think it's in the travel industry. Uh, and um, you know, I'll just, I don't have to introduce the category, so I'll just scroll through. And Sean, you can just uh, tell me what you're thinking here. So the yeah, negative keyword list, it's a really good build out. You can see when the green's bigger than the yellow, you know, <laughs> you know that you're working hard and the, and the word, words greater. And then for um, quality score, it's just tremendous. You know, sevens and tens, it's off the charts. Um, one thing that I do want to say is that I think it might be that they're not targeting enough stuff. They could be growing their PPC a lot more. Because if you get sevens and tens, a lot of times that tends to be, you know, like branded stuff and then the super long tail. So I think that this account could get even more aggressive and look for some shorter tail stuff, something that's a little bit earlier in the sales cycle. And even if you have quality scores in the fours, fives, and sixes, you can increase your number of leads. So that, that's the one major thing that jumped out of, about an otherwise outstanding account. Any other thoughts here? We're just going through here. Can, well, that, that's you there. Like you said, that's, that's great. That's where, uh, where the previous account wants to get to. And so you know that they're targeting the right thing since Google's saying you qualify for, is that 89? Yep. Yeah, it's good. That's <laughs> sick. It's sick. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Look at these click-through rates. He's got like 60, 80, 40, 20 percent click-through rates. It's, it's like the the chart had to be rescaled because <laughs> these the, these, uh, these click-through rates are so sick. And actually, I I did look at these these click -through, the, the keywords. They're not branded terms. Can you believe this? It's it's, it's, it's wow. Crazy. Uh, that is, uh, <laughs> I can hear like, the joy and kind of the wonder in your voice, Larry, and I totally agree. That's incredible. So it's like, and, and he's like only the 98th percentile. There's like two guys that we have that are better. <laughs> wow, that is good. Bravo. Uh, you know, a decent, decent amount of activity going on. Uh, you but know, then, you I, know, I like, like again, they're clearly taking the right actions. It's not about... The amount of movement, it's about having the right types of movements to get you where you want to be. So they're not 
in the hundred percentile, but that's probably because they're doing, you know, like waiting for statistical significance and kind of hanging out, and making sure that things are their tests are working and that their tests are provable. Yep, slow and steady wins the race. Uh, how about this one here? Um, it's just like you said last um, in the last one. Look, we flipped basically the, the number around. It's all long tail. So their keyword list is really outstanding. The click through rate's crazy, and they have it's because they have you know long keywords. They, they're probably intent rich. They're exactly what they're matching up what people are searching for exactly with what they want to see. So it's great. And, and look how many ads this guy has. He's got like eighty or ninety ads. It's great. <laughs> Really, it's really cool stuff to see, and um, you know, I think this monthly spend is, is like around three or four hundred dollars. So they're yeah. spending um, a good amount, but I think there's definitely room to grow, especially if you know what you're doing to this extent that you can get a fourteen percent click-through rate on average, which is insane. Um, it might be worth kind of dedicating more to your PPC um, resources so you can grow those leads even further. Yep, and uh, decent amount of landing pages. He's got. 25, so he's not sending everything to just one offer or one home page or something like that. Um, wow, look at the conversion rates here, uh, Sean. 13% conversion rates. So it's not just uh, it's not just uh, about driving traffic. He seems to be converting it pretty well. Um, exactly. And then and all and the and the, and the boards are all green in terms of the, the best practices. He's <laughs> taking advantage of everything uh, that, that that you can. Um, uh, possibly take advantage of in terms of the tools. So we're kind of late on, low on time here, so let's just go back to our deck here. That just gives you a sense for uh, what could possibly be, be uh, you know, your account in, in a, a year or two of, 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 of work. Uh, Sean, do you want to summarize our talk today? Yeah, absolutely. And so I think when you go into optimizing, you definitely want to have a, a key performance indicator identified. And so that will usually be something like click-through rate, um, I, I personally prefer CPL or return on ad spend, making sure that not only that you're getting leads, but you're getting the right kinds of leads and track those through the entire process. But whatever you use as your KPI, um, find out what you're not doing. And I think a great way to do that is you know, the AdWords grader. <laughs> it tells you if you got a green thumbs up, you're doing it right. If you have a red thumbs down, then uh, you got some work to do. And you can know what, what your next steps are going to be. And um, if you have those touch points like we talked about, if you establish a regular schedule, you can get your account um, where you want it to be. And I know that that first one, we spent a lot of time kind of talking about all the different areas, but if you identify a key performance indicator, start tracking it, you can move that in the right direction um, in little to no time at all. Just um, some of these quick changes, um, and then you know keep that formula taped to your pod wall like I do, <laughs> and it can help you um, move forward in your accounts because it's absolutely achievable. Yeah, I don't have anything to add here other than just uh, I want to thank the uh, anonymous advertiser for being so bold in uh, submitting the uh, the um, the report today for us to, to review. Um, I would just stay positive and uh, you know and, and just uh, think of it in terms of how you know uh, with a little bit of work over time how how much uh, better you could do uh, it, it, you know. So thank thank you so much, uh, anonymous advertiser. Uh, we have uh, another. Uh, poll question for our audience. Uh, Chris, are you there? Um, are we showing the right one here? Okay, so it, it has to do with would you like, uh, and we've got two offers for you today. I'll talk about the first one. Uh, the first one is a, a WordStream offer. Uh, that's a free one-on-one -on -one account assessment with a certified AdWords professional with the, with the folks at WordStream. That's my company. Uh, and that would be for kind of like small and medium-sized businesses, um, that kind of thing. Um, Sean, do you want to talk about uh, the Hennepin Marketing offering? Yeah, and so um, we we would have our our sales what's your name? marketing. Uh, I can't remember her job title, but but she would go through and give a solutions blueprint. Her name's Kayla. I know her name, not her job title. Paid search consultant. Megan just told me. Thank you, Megan. Um, and so she would walk you through and kind of identify opportunities where um, where things could improve in your account. So it's a lot like what we did today, only it's for your account specifically, and it's a lot of good actionables, um, just like we talked about today. Only on, it's on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You know, one thing I was going to say, guys, uh, what, uh, word streamers and PPC heroes on the on the line here, like, why the heck wouldn't you take us up on this offer? Like, you just walked through two accounts, and and, and we sh we showed you like how like. How many different things could, did we find? Like that, that, that this uh, anonymous advertiser could possibly, uh, you know, fix or, or improve on, or and and even 
even if you're doing well, like then then it's kind of like nice to know, like it kind of like affirms your awesomeness. So like th there is no reason why uh, I like I always get value out of a, a, a PPC audit from a second point of view in terms of someone else uh, critiquing or, or looking over kind of my my uh, my work. Uh, I can always you know don't be defensive or anything. I, I can always just you know, benefit from a, a you know something I might have missed. Even though I've been doing paid search for ten years. Uh, and 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 by the way, you know Hannafin Marketing. Uh, these guys are they know their stuff like um, wow just go to their blog uh, ppchero.com they know every little thing about paid search and and uh, so they're they're pretty good too uh, but uh, you know but it's for the larger accounts 20,000 a month minimum uh, but there's definitely I guarantee they'll find something that of, of value so so this is this would be uh, you know um, not a, a wasted effort here uh, and so uh, how are we doing on our poll question here Chris Oh, only thirty percent voted. Come on, guys, this is a <laughs> this is a great offer. Um, if, if the worst case scenario is that you get to brag to your superiors or your coworkers, that's a pretty good offer, Larry. When you were talking, I was like, he's right. There, there is no disincentive. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why wouldn't you want a free uh, a free uh, uh, assessment? And then our. our uh, the, the for the the word streamers uh, like if 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 you're kind of like an SMB type uh, are are the people who would review it are all certified AdWords reps uh, they're all um, pretty capable and competent uh, folks as well so uh, I think we're just going to leave that up and and uh, go to questions now um, uh, Chris do you have have any questions from our audience sure. Um, the first question we have here is, can you explain what is a negative keyword? I'll take that one because it's easy. You can take the harder ones, Sean. Um, the, it's an important uh, exclusionary uh, targeting method in um, in keywords. So uh, if you wanted to not appear on searches containing a specific word, uh, for example, Worst, or, or you know, whatever, whatever the word you would specify that keyword as a negative keyword, and the words uh, the Google would not show your ads for searches containing those words. So. Okay, another question we have here is: How many keywords do you recommend per ad? I guess I'll take that one, Larry, since, uh, yep. since you took the first one. Um, so this one, like best practice, and when I came into the industry, what people always said was between 20 to 40 keywords per ad group. Um, and this one, I, I think I'm on kind of the more uh, the more obsessive side of things. I get a little uh, like stressed out and fuzzy in my brain if I have more than like between five and ten keywords per ad group. It of course depends on how long tail there are, um, how much search volume there is there. But for the stuff that really drives traffic for me. I'm really happiest when it's, you know, like if I get a keyword that can spend a thousand bucks a month, I like to keep that one in its own ad group so I can optimize to it specifically. Even just one keyword, one match type of that keyword. I think I'm kind of on the more restrictive end of that. So um, best practice I heard is 20 to 40 keywords per ad group. What, what do you operate with there? Um, uh, it's just not the number. It's just as long as they're similar, as long as they kind of fit together, that's fine. You know, okay. Yeah, if, it, if the ad makes sense for the keyword, uh, I yeah. think that's a good, a good. You know, it's kind of a, a basic thing to say, but I think sometimes people overlook that and just think of numbers, like you said. So, thank you for calling me out on my addiction to numbers. <laughs> They're both fine, though. Uh, you can, you can, you, you can. I think the limit is two, two thousand. <laughs> so uh, don't do that. Do not. <laughs> Well, no, it could be a display network campaign. You, you you can be a little bit more more broad and generic in your in your display network targeting. Um, all right, next question. Okay, um, we have a question here about uh, in general, how much time do you suggest I spend in my account each week? Um, so we talked about that a little bit. Uh, you know, slow and steady wins the race. I think it's it's more about you know just being regular as opposed to you know is it one hour or half an hour or two hours but you know I think that uh, like I would I would um, you know no one no one has like you know 50 hours a week to spend on paid search unless you're like a, a full time you know PPC hero Hennepin marketing agency kind of thing. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Uh, 
So, you know, I recognize, you know, you guys probably have other things to do if, if, if you're not a full-time agency. Um, so I would just say, you know, if you could dedicate, you know, 30 minutes, 20 minutes a week and then just make it regular, like pick a couple things, uh, then that would actually be uh, huge. You'd actually you'd be ahead of 90% of, of advertisers. So, so there's, a, there's a statistic for you. Uh, you know, half of advertisers, small and medium-sized businesses, don't do anything in their account in, in the last 30 days. Uh, and so if you could just do it once a week, you would be ahead of 90% of the others out there. And then the search is competitive, so that's that would be, uh, you'd be up there. Um, Sean? Yeah, I think, I think you're right on. It's just knowing your account. Um, it, it depends how much is going on, how many initiatives you're doing, how much you're testing. I think, like you said, if you have you know, a half an hour a week, as long as you're just dedicated and you, and you know what's going on. I think awareness is the main reason that you want to maintain your account. You want to know what's happening. You want to know why it's happening. You want to know what you did to make it happen. So I think regular maintenance is the way to go about it. Um, I guess a quick plug for someone who used to write for PPC Hero. He wrote a book called uh, PPC on an Hour a Week or something like that. His name's Joe Kirschbaum. I think he contributed to a book. But I've seen that bandied about in one of his bios. So that's one. Um, he recommends an hour a week, as the title would suggest. And I think that that's kind of a, a blueprint or just a, a way for you to go about that. So you could uh, check for that book. but. Um, I personally haven't read it. I just I just know his name and the title of the book. So sometimes when people ask how long per week, I think PPC in an hour a week. Maybe it's just that um, I've heard that title too many times, Larry. So we could all just disregard yeah, so, that. Uh, so so uh, think my company WordStream sells software. Like we sell a PPC management platform called PPC Advisor, and one of the the key selling points of this thing is actually uh, something called the 20 minute PPC work week. Uh, so why an hour <laughs> when you can do 20 minutes? Like, no, just kidding. Um, yeah, that, that book we, is outdated. So the 20 minute does <laughs> post dates it. So I think you're, you're more on the cutting edge. Yeah, but basically what it does is it, it, it does a bunch of analysis in your account, you know, kind of figures out low-hanging fruit, prioritizes. It gives you 10 things to do this week that you can finish in roughly two minutes per task. So it's roughly a 20-minute PPC work week. And, you know, uh, it, it just uh, the, the key here is just uh, consistency, I think, as opposed to, like, number of hours uh, per week. Um, your next question? Okay, um, I think we're kind of running out of time here, Larry, on questions. Um, but I know after the webinar, you like to usually do like a blog post. Um, so maybe we can get a lot of these questions answered there. Um, but also, you can take advantage of these offers here and you know speak to an expert one on one, and they can answer a lot of these questions that that are coming in. Um, a cool fact um, someone actually sent to me was that since the last webinar they attended for WordStream, they had a 34 percent on their grader score, and today they're at 81%. So um, it's great to see people are in there making changes, being active, and uh, in improving their account. So I thought that was really cool. Congratulations. Uh, that's, that's great. Hey, hey. <laughs> uh, just before signing off here, uh, I think we wanted to just point out, if you want to meet uh, Sean and I, uh, there is a conference going on in April, I think April 9 or April 10. Uh, or there is eight eight to ten uh, in Austin. It's a hero conference. It's like there'll be lots of PPC heroes in one building. It'll be just like the Avengers of PPC or the Justice League of PPC or something. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, you know, a lot of Sean will be there and a lot of other uh, smart people. Um, so there's a special uh, code here: uh, two hundred dollars off uh, with the code webinar underscore HC. And we'd be happy to, you know, while, while you're there, um, answer any other questions that you may have. Uh, anything to add to that, Sean? Oh, it's, it's great. I was new to the industry last year when I went, and it was just mind blowing. Every every session, I was like, what? So, um, if you have, the, if you can do it, I think it's really cool to do. And I should also note that you'd be surprised how tall some of the PPC Hero staff is. So if anybody's interested in height-related trivia, it's surprising. And uh, if, that's, <laughs> if the $200 off isn't enough, maybe thinking about our heights <laughs> would get you there. Uh, just what I always wanted. Um, <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right and, uh, and here's some, some URLs uh, for, for people in terms of our contact information. You can shoot uh, Sean or me a note uh, on anything you saw today. There's some uh, free trial stuff for WordStream and um, and a, a free solutions blueprint offering from the 
with our folks at Hennepin Marketing. So that's awesome. So thanks, uh, everyone, for attending. Uh, I don't have anything else, so uh, th thanks again. Thanks, Sean, and have a great afternoon. Yeah, thanks, Larry. It was great. Thanks, thanks audience. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, guys.